Hey everybody, welcome back to the Full Circle Network. I'm Editor-in-Chief of FullCircleCinema.com, Jackson Hayes. Today we are here to review Episode 7 of Titans Season 2, otherwise titled Bruce Wayne. And today I will be joined by my Managing Editor, Marcos Melendez. Hey, what's up guys? Glad to be back. and We have a really good episode to discuss this week. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's the consensus here with me and you. Um, so before we get into it, we usually don't do a lot of the uh, like the background, like who wrote it, or who directed it. But this episode, and this was definitely one of our most anticipated, was written by a friend of the show, Brian Hill. Um, we interviewed him once. I know we mentioned that on previous episodes, but uh, so we were really, really anticipating this episode. And he's worked on Batman before. He's written Batman and the Outsiders, the comic book for DC, and Detective Comics, and Detective uh, he Comics did some stuff there. Um, he's also written Killmonger, and he wrote two episodes last season: um, Asylum and Blank on the other one. Together, uh, together, I together. Um, I always forget that one. So uh, we were like really hyped for this episode because we we know his work and how good it yeah. is, and especially last season on Titans, how well it was done. And then it was directed by Akiva Goldsmith, who's a who's a controversial Gold's figure in in, uh, in comic book television, comic book movies. But uh, I think overall, I think I think this is one of the definitely one of the better episodes of the season, Marcos. Yeah, I think it's like they continue on their streak. I think Akiva did an episode last season, and I thought it was my one of my favorites. And of course, as you mentioned, Brian Hill. Uh, interestingly enough, I think the Brian Hill episodes all have to do pretty much with Dick Grayson's arc, and that definitely continues on here. So if you want to give your thoughts first, because you're host. Yeah, sure. sure. Um, so, yeah, so this picks up after last week with the Superboy incident, and, you know, we pick up on that cliffhanger. Um, but, it, uh, you know, once we really get into it, it really comes into focus that this is a Dick-centric episode. Like, this is going to be about <laughs> Dick and, oh, and his... And his uh, <laughs> And his journey as a character because of all the stuff that's been happening because of Deathstroke. Because, again, even though there's been a week in between, the last thing that happened with the Titans was Jason falling off the building and Connor yeah. grabbing him. So Dick felt like he kind of failed um, at his mission. And then now in this episode, which we which was we assumed would be either a flashback episode um, where Bruce came to the tower after Garth's death, maybe, or... Um, or just or like a, maybe there's a combination, right? Combination of of uh, current day where Bruce shows up. I I had the theory that he came to help uh, deal with Connor's kryptonite poisoning because he's obviously probably dealt with it something yeah. like that similar before with the Justice League. That didn't end up happening, but what happened was that Bruce is inside of Dick's head and he's kind of you know uh, he's going along with him in this journey trying to put him on the right path because Dick is not thinking clearly. Um, after what happened with Jason and all this Deathstroke stuff, that he just wants to end it, so he goes off on his own again. Um, in hopes of taking down Deathstroke in a really, I thought it was a really well done, you know, kind of, sent, you know, just focused on Dick going, going to this place, he's going on this mission, he take, he goes and takes on Wintergreen briefly before he has another slight interaction with Deathstroke, not really. Um, but yeah, I thought this was, I thought it was really well done, I mean, I really want to give some uh, love to the dialogue this episode, which of course was written by Brian. Um, the, the episode is hit, the, some of the dialogue in the show can be hit or miss sometimes, um, but it really worked for the characters this week and all the different subplots that was going on because there was a lot going on on top of the Dick stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I'm more than thrilled about this episode. I thought it was great. Definitely one of the best of the season. So Marcos, we'll go to you. Uh, yeah, I pretty much agree there. I think like a lot of the Dick stuff was pretty much the best stuff in the episode. And I'm, I'm going to have to mention, of course, it's England as Bruce Wayne. He's kind of just sprinkled throughout and uh, I guess Dick Grayson's conscience. Uh, he's just talking, and I thought he's both simultaneously hilarious throughout the episode, and also I think by the end, he does a really good job of like acting like Bruce Wayne, but also how Dick Grayson like visions Bruce Wayne, and I thought that had a really good dynamic throughout the episode, even though it's just all in his head, which I thought was interesting. We didn't actually get to like see Bruce Wayne actually there, but it was good enough for me, and I thought that was definitely the highlight for in this episode, I think, Ian Glenn kind of really showed why he was cast and i think that he really got the uh the ability to shine compared to the ep other episodes where i don't know, he hasn't been in it and i think since what episode three yeah i think so episode two or three yeah but yeah i thought he was great of course we also get some connor stuff we get crypto uh, he's a good boy once again he flies which is which is pretty dope um and yeah i think uh Starfire had something to do, finally, I think. Uh, yeah, everyone got a little Connor. something to do. Everyone this except week, for, except... Ex yeah, you know, um, except for one. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> Gar opened that door. He opened the door for Eve, okay? He got a little moment to shine, even though everyone else got to use their powers and be cool and had something going on. 
he at least got to open the door. But um, I want to go back to your point on Bruce because going into this, I was like, oh, man, we're going to get a Bruce Wayne episode. It's going to be about Batman. We're going to learn all this stuff. But when I really came out of it and what I understood, I was like, this isn't a Batman show. This isn't a show yeah. about Batman. It's not a show about Bruce Wayne. It's a show about the Titans. So we should be looking at Bruce from the Titans' perspective, and that's all this episode was, was how Dick perceives Bruce. And, you know, in the season, they've clearly been making up um, after they're falling out years ago, um, after he goes and visits him in the first episode. Yeah. But this is it's still five like, years ago. Get their years right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, be very specific. Five years ago, but he um like this 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 shadow that's over him. Like the, I mean, obviously, Batman couldn't be a bigger shadow. I mean, he is the biggest superhero there is. He's the you know the the center of morality. He's everything that people aspire to be. But it's like you have to like find your own way and dick just feels like he doesn't want to be batman 2.0 mm -hmm. he doesn't want to be yep. robin 1.0 he wants to be his own person and obviously the, it's we've been talking about how irritating that's been how long it's been dragged out but had we gotten yeah, this no. episode like this specific episode earlier in the season or at the end of something like last season it would have worked so much better for me and i think that they kind of are making up for it now with this kind of episode just because it was like we're tr we're finally understanding what dick is feeling yeah. and he's not just not talking he's not just not holding it anymore which has been happening the entire season. No one will say a word to anyone about anything. Yeah, it's kind but, of annoying. But we and, finally, yeah, 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 we finally get this. Like, Dick is finally coming to terms with what's happening and what's going on and how he's at fault for some of it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, Bruce plays a huge part in that, of course, because he's he's the big figure in his life. He's the person he looks to, and we learn, you know, how he looks at him in a bigger way, I guess, in this episode. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that also he has some. I think uh, Brent Thwaite said. Dick Grayson has someone like I think some of the best scenes here. Uh, does emo on an emotional standpoint, I think that he really does he has things to work with, and especially I think with the final scene with Jason Todd, where he God, you know of so course good. reveals, yeah, where he reveals he killed Jericho, which you know we'll see how exactly that went down. I doubt it went down exactly how he. We're all thinking. I don't think you know Dick Grayson went towards Jericho and said, "I'm gonna snap, snap your neck." Or something like that. No, I think, I think, more I think it's a lot happen. more complicated than that because I feel like they both take blame for it at some point. But yeah. um, let's go back to that scene because that scene really hit yeah, me m emotionally more than I thought it would when it started. Um, obviously, we, well, let's backtrack a little bit and what was going on with Jason. So Jason, I thought, was also, Kern Walters was also fantastic in this episode where he, this you know, he's this is right after yeah, the events, right, right after, huge, huge, he fell right out of that building and we come back to meet him again and he's... He's broken up about it. He's not. He's 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 really conflicted and he's scared and he's he, he's going through all the emotions. But he doesn't know how to deal with them. Obviously, he's the he's you know one of the sons of Batman. He doesn't he doesn't deal with you know feelings well. Yeah. So he's just standing there at the end, his window, staring out like just re like reliving all the events over and over and over and over. He can't get it out of his head. And you know he has a little thing with Rose in the middle that you know it was a good it was some good moments it was some nice scenes but he still doesn't get over it and she obviously storms out she finds Jericho's thing which we'll deal with later in the season I, I assume but then you know um, eventually like th throughout the whole episode all these weird things are happening in the tower and then eventually Raven confronts him about it and you know uh, blames him for it and says he did it when he hasn't even left his room and like what we assume yeah. is a couple days he's just been staring at the he's been staring at the, the wall window. and Deathstroke is here trying to tear them apart but you know none of the other people realize it and he left the photo for Dawn he left the the soda for Donna and the and the bourbon for Hank and it's like you know someone's pulling at their strings and you know he gets blamed for because he's the you know he's the loner he's the asshole he's the guy who nobody wants to be friends with and whatever and it finally breaks him at the end because he didn't do any of these things and they're just blaming him for it without even you know even looking into it at all because he's that you know he's always the one that that comes to do that kind of stuff and it's like you know he he he's broken and he just leaves and when dick comes in he realizes you know this is you know what what's going on with jason he goes up to that rooftop and then so yeah, Marcus. Let's let's talk about that scene. So I mean, I mean, the whole yeah. storyline to you though, though. I mean, Kurt Walters and going into the scene. Yeah, I'm gonna agree there, of course. Um, I think that I think that the very, very final scene, how everything just leads up to it, how Dick, how Dick Grayson like pretty much comes to terms, it's kind of his fault, and it, you know he kind of just consoles Dick. I mean, Jason, and yeah, I think I think current Kurt Walters is brilliant in the scene. I thought that like I thought they had really good chemistry as well. Um, it was also heartbreaking, really. I think that they really pulled it off first. It's a really big moment, I think, in the season, a big turning point. I think, as since we're you know we're halfway, well, right, I think it worked perfectly well. Let's give them credit because you know two weeks ago when we were just with Jason, he was the same cocky kid we'd already we'd already seen him to be. Yeah. When he, when he was with Deathstroke, he was even being cocky and all that. You know, flip two weeks later, it's a completely different character. He's in a completely different state of mind. 
you know, he's his mind is like gone basically. He's just reliving these moments over and over and over again. Yeah. Because of how traumatizing that could be. He thought he's going to die. He thought he, you know, his his someone he looks up to and Dick had failed failed him and all this other stuff and he just felt like he lost and he let him down. But, you know, and then no one was there to help him. You know, Dick isn't good with the emotion stuff. He tries to talk to him at one point in the episode early on, but nothing really comes of it. And then, you know, he goes off on his own. And so Jason stays there and just has to, like, stew in it and live in it. And by the end of it, you know, Dick wasn't there to help him. Dick wasn't there to protect him. And they all just blame him immediately for it. And then, you know, he's he, he just can't take it anymore. And, you know, this is a buildup. And he talks about it. It's a buildup of all these people that have tried to help him. And, and they all get hurt. They all have failed. He has this thing that follows him, this darkness. Yeah. But then it's just the fact that, you know, Dick turns it and says, it's not you, it's me. It, I mean, it's it's very well done. It's two characters who come from similar places that are so broken that, you know, you don't get to explore that a lot. But this 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 one very, this one scene did it so well that it's just like, yeah. damn, like, I wish, like, I wish there was a lot more of this in these kind of shows. I mean, not yeah, not just tight specifically, but yeah. just in, like, the comic book movie or comic book television genre, like, in general. Yeah, for sure. Like, just stuff like this, like, the psyches of these characters. And I wish, you know, I think that Brian Hill did an excellent job in this episode. And I, I wish that I felt like, I feel like there should be a little bit more cohesive, cohesiveness with the rest of the episodes. I feel like each one has their own thing. It, I think they should be more connected. And I feel like, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. If they had, I feel like if they had a little bit more, like, a cohesive vision to them. And I, th- I feel like the this type of episode would have hit a little harder, even though I think it was really well done anyways. But yeah, as you said, I think it could have come a little earlier. But I think it still works where it is. And I, I'm fine with waiting for uh, Nightwing because I'm, I, even the actors already said we're getting Nightwing. We've already seen the suit on set. So we're getting him. So I, the fact that we're just going to have to wait a little bit more and we're still going to see like his story arc is fine by me. I think the most important part is the f- you know the fact that they understand the character. They're, they do want to like give him development. And I think that's like the very the most, most important part. We all want to see Nightwing. Which is cool, but I feel like if they get their character right, that kind of makes up for it. Right, and I think I think if you had asked me at the beginning of the episode, oh, do you want to see Nightwing this week? Do you want to see Nightwing this week? But yes, of course I want to see Nightwing this yeah. week. But as the episode went on, I, I would told, probably would have told you no, because like this is a, this is what we've always wanted to see in this yeah. in Dick's story, where it's like, well, what is he so broken up about? What is he not getting? Yeah, you want to see where it, where it goes? Right, we're like finally in his head, and we're like, oh, we're, we get it. Like we understand what's happening. Like the secret is weighing on him. You know the the fate of all of his friends are, you know, in in the balance, and it's just like, I get it now. You didn't, you didn't do, you know, I just, up to this point, I hadn't, it hadn't hit me hard enough, where I was like, can he just become Nightwing already? Can he just become Nightwing already? Yeah. But, like, exactly. this is the kind of build-up that you need to get there to be like, oh, now I want this anticipation of yeah, him when coming it happens, out of his zone. Yeah, when it happens, it's going to be Right, this makes it so much better. And, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm glad they did this. I'm, we needed an episode like this, because I feel like, had they just gone to Nightwing, yes, it would have been a great m- moment for fans and, you know, fan service and all that, but I don't think it would have hit as heavy for the character. Definitely not. He just would have put on a there. suit. You know, he just would have put on a suit. It's not It's not what this is and him becoming something different. And I'm glad that we got this moment. I'm glad we got these moments between two Robins. And it wasn't, not that there's anything wrong with these other characters, but, it, you know, it wasn't between him and Starfire. It wasn't between him and uh, Raven. It was him and uh, Jason who come from such similar yeah. places that it just they understand each other even if they they don't you know want to or like admit yeah, that they do one replace the other so it's gonna of course it's right gonna right one is stepping into the shoes of another person who's already stepping in the shoes of a different person <laughs> so it's just this it's just this line of like shadows that are just like, you know weighing each other down and they're all in the same boat and they need to you know understand that about each other yeah for sure um i think we've like we really praised this episode i want to mention at least like a few things i thought was a it was a yeah, okay sure, of course, of course. At best uh our gar he opened a door but he barely even opened that one i mean this this episode wasn't for him and i know that yes there true. was no I, place I, for I him but that for sure it continues to be a problem that he's being underutilized <laughs> yeah. in this show he's literally like, utilized it, i can't blame like, i can't blame this plot. episode for it specifically but it as yeah, for the, sure. yeah but i don't it, blame the episode no itself. but as it goes on you're right it he's completely being wasted on this show but and I think that when Bruce Wayne kind of like faded out, like he was Yoda or like something <laughs> yeah. was weird. <laughs> I wish he that he Dick had just turned and he was gone <laughs> instead. He had to fade yes, away. Sure. Yeah. And I guess it, it would have been difficult to pull that off because you know it, Bruce wasn't there the entire episode. Like sometimes he'd disappear yeah. and sometimes he'd come back. Um. So I guess they couldn't just do a disappearing act. I guess. But the, but the fade was weird. <laughs> the fade. The fade was, was a little weird. It was a little weird. That's fine. I mean, they could have done like a little bat start coming out, and there's just like a fade. Yeah, honestly, I did. I I do want to give a shout out to 
Ian Glenn doing his best Adam West impression. Yeah, that in, was a great, the club. Was a great scene. It was a great, great homage scene. to to Adam West, and I thought it was a I thought it was a great moment, a really subtle way to, you know, give homage to to one of the great Batman of all time. For sure. Um, also, the uh, I'm forgetting it now. I'm blanking right now. Actually, uh, I don't know, I'm blanking. It's another another part where we were like, eh. Maybe maybe that wasn't the best. Um, I'm forgetting now. I can't think off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm gonna uh, let's look sure at the, we had sure some comments come. last week. Yeah, we do want to do let's, the. Let's we got a lot of comments them. last week. Or we, so yeah, we'll just to wrap up this episode. Oh, wait, I remember. Real quick. I remember. Oh, okay. I remember. Go ahead. Now, what's going on with all the pictures and the the? the someone's messing around in the Titans Tower. I didn't. Is I mean, Slade, are we just, supposed to pretend Slade is Slade just, is just around, sneaking, around sneaking around in around? his Deathstroke suit, taking photos of his daughter dancing around? I don't with the think boy. it's Rose. I don't think it's Rose. No, it has to be. De- I mean, Rose. we 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 were led to believe it's Deathstroke. He leaves the the stuff. I mean, for or okay, it could be this. Could it be that Rose left the cameras, placed the cameras everywhere. It's working. I don't. But I, I yeah. That. But it, I'm yeah, I'm gonna agree with you. It's really weird the way they were set up and the fact that yeah. like. He was able to sneak around in this place full of people. There's so many people in this tower. Like, Superboy's in there. Corey's in there. Like Eve Donna, and Crypta Hank, show up. and Don were just chilling. Oh, they, they're, what were they, cooking cooking dinner, eating Chinese food the whole episode? Yeah. They were doing nothing this week. I like, uh, what was the, Rose, Rose has a good line to Jason where she was like, you're the only one that does anything in this place. <laughs> and, and I was like, was you're, right. you're kind of right. <laughs> He's the only one that has it's any initiative right. to do anything, has any kind of plan. But I mean, listen, it is, I mean, it is what it is, but you know, there's too many characters on the show already, and so half of them don't get to be used in an episode, and then, you know, the other, you know, flip it the other way the next week, but, uh, I mean, I'll take what I can get with a, with a Dick and Jason focused episode. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so, I do have the comment. Yeah, so we're gonna, let's do, let's do, we got a bunch of comments okay. last week, so we'll break yeah. those down after the Superboy episode, so we'll kick it off. Yeah, so, Dave175 uh, says, isn't it interesting how the better episodes of the sh- of this show aren't about the Titans or a detour from the main story? I guess what you're trying to say is, like, the best ones are, like, when goes Some off of the side the characters, yeah. like Jason so, like, Todd and Doom Patrol. Like, and just, like, you know, Superboy. Um, I will say this this episode kind of disproved that. I thought I did it. I, I will. I would agree with that if this episode didn't come out. But I do. Say, it's interesting how I would. Uh, how I would agree with. Worked a lot. Yeah, I would agree with that with the first season. I think yeah, because sure. this first season the storyline was so off. The episodes like Jason Todd and Doom Patrol like stood out a lot, and um, more like in Asylum. I remember being it wasn't. It, w- it was away from the main Trigon storyline, you know. It, yeah. it was it was something else. It was about the characters themselves, but it was um, but the episodes that kind of deterred away from the Trigon stuff. But this season, I'm way more into the Deathstroke storyline. So like, you know, Aqualad's probably my favorite episode of the series so far, I think. Um, and that was obviously about the main story, and it was you know, it was flashback. Yeah, it was still connected. It was, it was still connected. It was still connected. And this yeah. one is directly connected as well. Um, but but last week's was a really good episode, and I think it's definitely one of the best of the show. Um, yeah, and so, the rest I of mean, his I, comment, I, yeah. yeah, he goes on to say, uh, what, almost as if it's a stealthy way of unloading a bunch of pilots on us under the guise of a Titan show. I think it's just them just doing, okay, let's just do, if we're going to introduce a character, let's just take an episode and do, do it. I think that's like the way. Yeah, and I don't mind that because, because they, they pick fan favorite characters and they have them stick yeah. around. Like Jason Todd was not supposed to be a series regular on this show um, from the get go. But, you know, people really enjoyed him in season one and really, like, gave him praise. And, like, they were like, oh, well, people like this character. we got to get him and on he's more. Great. And now he's, and now he's, he's great. And really now he's great. Now he's the like main player. Well. Yeah. I think, like, it's I think it's really fresh to see, like, a Titans team, but it still has a Robin. And to have a Jason Todd is really cool because I don't th- I don't think we get a lot of that in comics. I don't even yeah. remember a comic where, you know. I think uh, he was Jason very Todd, briefly. Probably, like, very briefly. Probably. But, obviously, he got like, killed off so quickly. It was, you know, it wasn't even yeah, a big exactly. deal. Yeah, so, exactly. It's much more Dick and Tim Drake that are... I, I do like that. I really like that. And the fact, like, he's the experienced one in the group. Uh, I think that that was a really good uh, good idea to keep him around. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I think this is to do that just because, one, they don't have to, like, that... Whoever writes that episode doesn't have to worry about connecting to anything. I think that's why... They kind of just tell uh, they tell a contained story, so I think that's why the, they're kind of the best ones. They don't have to worry about anything. Right. And else. I don't I don't think season one was the best measure of all of this because of how you know they had to do the reshoots yeah. at the end yeah, of the season. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It was a whole thing they had to go on. It was yeah. it was a little bit of a mess, but they they've re, you know they've re, 
what they write in the ship wrote the ship this this season so it's 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 much different much different angle now yep i'm looking at other comments let me see all right someone commented about uh Karna's powers the young justice version of con oh let me see let me see who it was joseph hufford uh, the, the, yeah, yeah, the young, uh, young young Justice version of Connor is, as far as I know, the only version of him without flight. T.F. John's version of the character, inspiration for both this version and Young Justice's version of, of the character, has all the powers of the Kryptonian. He's just weaker. His original powers were a form of telekinesis that allow him to mimic Superman's flight and strength. My guess is he can't fly. He needs to develop it, and because it gives us something to look forward to. I'm hoping sometime down the line Superman teaches him. It would be a good moment for them. I think that I would agree with you. I hope that's I hope that's the way that they're going with it. But I have a feeling it won't be fine with flying. That's a I mean that's a great suggestion. And you know, thanks for the the background info. Um, like I said, like we said last week, like I'm really only familiar with the Young Justice version, so I, I haven't read the Jeff Johns run on the character. But it um, it makes sense to me that uh, because Superman isn't on the show. Um, at least in like in the forefront, it makes sense for uh, at least to me for him to have more Kryptonian like powers, like in line with the character because you know it gives him that edge, the heat vision. Everyone loves the iconic heat vision, and if he's in the flying, um, I'm not sure we'll see him fly just because they seem not to like like character like uh, having characters fly because in the comics Except Raven, for crypto. Except for but yeah, crypto. okay, right, but that's you know it's a dog, it's not a forefront character. Like Starfire can fly in the comics, Raven can fly in the comics. They don't fly. <laughs> they definitely don't fly on this show. Yeah, they haven't made any true. effort to teach them how to fly or, or even Jason Todd hint at the, flew. Ooh, a little bit. He flew a little bit. <laughs> kind of freaked him out a little bit. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think from last week. Oh, well, there was one comment. I don't know if you grabbed at, about the see, about my see. convenience, my convenience yes, comment yes, from last week. Uh, yes. I guess me and me and this, me and this guy are going to have a little yeah. beef, but that's okay. I'm have, willing to have the, the well, lighthearted I, conversation. I, 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 I think I can agree with him, actually. So let's oh, see. okay. We'll see. see. Right. I mean, listen. Okay, let's see. Do, do I read it out or not? No, yeah. Go ahead and read it out. Okay, I'll go first. Uh, it wasn't convenience that Superboy was in the vicinity of where Jason Todd fell. It was the story. People use the terminology like convenient when they prefer a story be told differently. Instead of simply letting the character creatives of shows slash movies to tell the stories in their own ways... If, like you said, if, like you all said, he'd have just heard a commotion and come running, someone else would have said, that's just so convenient. I think he has a point there, especially the last bit. I feel like if you're just going to have Superboy save Jason Todd, I think they did it just the most natural way possible. They could have, I mean, they could have changed it. People would still would say it's convenient. But isn't everything convenient anyways? I mean, okay, it's a story. but let me break it down in layman's terms. All right. Okay, what what would you say would describe a situation in which the sidekick of a superhero on a certain superhero team is falling out of a building and another the clone of that of another member of that team happens to be walking by as that one falls he jumps to the building and grabs him of all the places in the world, of all the times in the in the world, they're all they're, it's all happening in the very same moment. Well, look, the factory that they that's called San Francisco. That's no, called it was, convenience. It called, it's called you setting things up. So you're like, okay, I'm gonna have this character here. Right, I know it was set he's up. He's gonna walk, but... and then he's gonna save him. But it's just like it's just a this way matter of but like. This wasn't. Oh, Starfire happened to be walking by. It was Superboy catching yes, Robin. Yes, but it was him. Walking by because he would just if came you're back, watching came out a of the super factory, which if you was were watching if you were watching a Batman an episode of Batman the animated series right and, right he, and he was it was the very beginning he's never met anyone he's just running around being Superman or being Batman by himself yeah he's being Superman huh no he's being Batman and he falls out of a building and out of nowhere Superman just happens to be flying right on by. And catches well, him that, in his arms. that wouldn't be set up. Was was it seen before him? You know, showing but, Superman right, but flying they put through it, San Francisco. They put it in San Francisco to make it convenient. No, it's called setting up the story. Come on, bro. Listen, I understand that. I understand. Listen, you don't need to lecture me about the storytelling. How to story tell? He needed to be there. They put him there. I well, get that. I hope that. we get to talk to. But the um, definition of convenience. To writers, and then we'll ask the convenience. Right, they needed Superboy in San Francisco. I understand that, but you can't tell me it's not convenient. 
I mean, of course, this is a certain level of convenience, per right? But, se, but, 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 but you're saying that convenience is a bad like a, ter- is like a negative yeah, term. I don't I'm think not. It's I'm, I never said it was a negative thing. It was just a little. It was a little, you know, construct not constructive criticism, of course, but like just a little nitpick I had with the episode. Which I like, think well, this guy should I comment was, again. I thought give it was his a thoughts convenient. again, and then he'll he'll get on the next episode and you'll fight. Oh, I'll have if he wants to comment. I'll have the same conversation next week. I'm just saying, just because it was told in the story doesn't make it non convenient. I don't. I'm, they're not mutually exclusive. That's all I'll say. All right. All right. Hot takes. Well, we've gone we've gone on too long just talking, but I think it was a very good episode, and I think we had a great time talking no, about this it. This was a this was a great 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 episode. I thought it was fantastic, and I mean there was it was it was it it, it subverted my expectations is what I would say because I was ready for a oh man flashback Batman flashback Dick Grace and all this yada yada yada. But what they gave me was something completely different, and I was completely okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it too. Well, um, I think it was one of the best episodes of this season, and I think that the rest of the season could has a big possibility of being as good. So let's see. I think so. They're laying the continues. groundwork here. Because I don't really, I feel like the first half we kind of had an idea which episode was going to be about what, and I really don't know what else the rest will be. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Very excited. Yeah. So I think that think that about wraps it up. Marcos, where can they find you on social media? On Twitter, uh, follow me at BizGamer9. And, uh, of course, follow the page at Full Circle Cine. And you follow Jackson at uh, Jackson Hayes, uh, 67? 69? Nope, yep, 60, 69. 67. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, make sure to check FullCircleCinema.com for all your latest updates on movie and TV news. And Please. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course. Like, comment. Yeah, you we're know, almost you at 100 know. subscribers. Just get us there. Let's almost, almost. We'll I mean, keep we got, getting we got, re- reviews out. Right? We got huge numbers on last week's episode, over 2200 2300 views we want to thank you for that thank you for listening thank you for commenting we got a bunch of good comments keep them coming and that, that that's about it so uh, we'll catch you guys next week see you